Hey everybody, it's Christopher Small with CMS Law Firm. We do estate planning, we do probate, we do it well. Today I want to talk about how to avoid probate if you have out-of-state properties. Uh, before we get there though, if you are someone that has out-of-state properties and you want to avoid probate and you want to talk more about your specific situation, you can go to estatemeeting.com. If you are just someone that wants to talk estate planning or probate, no matter what, estatemeeting.com. Talk over the phone or in person, 30 minutes, free, estatemeeting.com. All right, um, as usual, this today's topic comes from a potential client meeting that I just had, and I thought it would be a great topic for today. Um, there was a, a, a gentleman in the office who has a couple of properties out of state. It was very important to him um, to avoid probate. He had seen um, what I'm about to talk to you about in, in um, uh, what am I looking for? Like in progress, in reality, I guess, in reality, with his parents who had taken steps, th these similar steps that I'm gonna talk about, and everything was very smooth, seamless, the transition was easy, and he was looking to do that as well. And let me talk to you about what happens if you don't do anything um, before I get to the solution. So what makes having out-of-state properties difficult or sort of um, um, not I, difficult, it's fine, like not good, not great, is that if you die, even if you have a will or if you don't have a will and you are giving the properties to someone, then what has to happen is um, each state that has a property in it is going to have its own separate probate because each state is going to have to give the executor or the personal representative the authority to sell or transfer that property in that state. So what happens is if you, let's say you, um, you live and you die in Washington State and you have a property in Texas and you have a property in Kansas, what you have to do is you have to open a property here in Washington State and then you have to open a, a probate in Texas and you have to open a probate in Kansas. So you can see how this can be cumbersome, it can be expensive, it can be time consuming, it can be a huge pain in the butt. Okay, so I guess I'll give you two solutions, two potential solutions, it depends on what state your properties are in and if, if this first solution is a possibility, but one solution that you could do is if the states that you have properties in have transfer on death designations, then you could use transfer on death designations in each state to sort of circumvent the probate process and make sure that your properties go to whomever you want them to when you pass away. Uh, Washington State has a transfer on death designation, so you can basically say, when I die, I want my property to automatically go to Joe, okay? And then when you die, they file the death, record the death certificate, and the, count, the uh, property automatically um, changes hands. So if you are lucky enough to have um, property in all states that do that, that's great. Now, I don't know how many states do that either. Um, Texas is one of them that does allow it. I think Kansas, I'm from Kansas, that's why I talk about Kansas, but I think, see my Jayhawk right there. Um, that's me, by the way. If you're ever wondering, that's me. That was a best, that was a groomsman gift from my best man, one of my college buddies, like from way back in the day. It's, I'm green now, but anyway. Um, you can do that. If you do not, if, if you own property in a state that does not have a transfer on death designation, then what you're gonna wanna do is a revocable living trust. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, easy to manage while you're alive, easy to manage when you're gone. But what happens is you create this trust, you transfer all of your properties into this trust while you are alive, and then when you die, there's no need to go through the probate process to transfer the property because it's already held in trust. All that happens is a new trustee steps in, follows the directions that you lay out, sells the property, gives them away, holds the property, whatever you want, and there's no need for probate, there's no need for any sort of big transition. There's no need to do anything except what the trust says. Very smooth, very simple, very easy, all right? All it takes is a little bit of work up front to create the trust, a little bit of work up front to transfer the properties into the trust, and bada bing, bada boom, probate has been avoided, okay? So if you have properties in multiple states and you are interested in avoiding probate, I would highly encourage you to consider um, avoiding probate in that circumstance, because like I said, it's just cumbersome. It takes a long time. It's expensive. You're gonna have to deal with people in multiple states. You're gonna have to deal with multiple attorneys in multiple states. Who wants to do that? One attorney is enough, but to have to deal with more than one attorney in, uh, in, in, at one time, 
killer. Who wants to do that? Um, so you can avoid that with a trust, revocable living trust. All right, if that is something that is appealing to you, if you want to learn more, please go to estatemeeting.com. You can set up a time to talk with me over the phone or in person. I would love to talk to you and um, hear your story, hear what you've got going on, give you some suggestions, um, talk through what your goals are, and see if you can't get some work done, okay? Um, otherwise, I am Christopher Small. I'm the owner of CMS Law Firm. We do estate planning. We do probate. We do it well. And uh, that's it for today. Okay, hopefully this information helped you out. And I uh, look forward to maybe talking to you in person or over the phone in the future. All right, have a great day.